View TV coming to you from our studios right here at the LA Film School at Sunset and Vine. And without further ado, it's time to welcome in the man, the myth, the legend, Tech Nine. Yeah. Once again, my friend. Welcome back. All day. Thanks for having me again. Anytime. So it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, last time I had you, I, I remember I put you on TV for the, the first, first time, time ever, mm -hmm. which is insane to me. I thought yeah. you'd done TV plenty of times. Either. Now you've gone on to do a lot of other things. Yeah, you've got yeah. this huge record you already performed. <laughs> totally. With two chances blowing up. Yes, but sir. I want to talk to you about this record that dropped Monday. Uh oh. So I got an early peek of it before, and I just was like, oh my God, this yes, sir. is incredible. Speed Worldwide Speed Choppers 2. Worldwide Choppers 2. Me, the fans Chris have been Calico, waiting. and Eminem. Marshall Mathers so, killed it. Everybody has been wanting, all your fans have been wanting this collaboration mm -hmm. forever. And you and M actually go way back. Yes, when did you guys do. first meet? Um, we met on the set of the Wake Up Show Anthem with Sway and King Tech in 1998 or 99. One of the one, I think it was 99. It, it came out in 99, so maybe it was 98. And uh, we had talked back then, and we said we were going to work. But it took all the way from then to now. You know what I mean? So I guess the stars aligned finally all those years later. I've been trying, and um, it's such a masterpiece. It's, it's really an incredible record. I mean, when I heard it, the way you come in, and then Chris mm -hmm. kills it, too. I know, man. And Chris comes in and oh shreds it, and it's, it's a tribute to Richie Havens. Freedom, freedom, you know what I mean? Because I love that Richie Havens song, you know, that he did at Woodstock, man. So yeah. I thought Speedum would be perfect to say thank you Richie Havens for such a wonderful song and then yeah. Eminem just gets on it and shreds it and Chris Calico comes and murder it and I just come demolish it it's just three choppers man this is the one right here man it, this it, is the one and um, it's, it's extremely massive I can't stop listening to it I can't either I was gonna actually I was trying to listen to it to get all these questions ready but there, it's one of those songs you listen to like a million times because yeah. there's so much in it I mean M spits Dude. what 20 I was like he spits I, I sent out for him to do 16 bars so mm -hmm. I said I need 16 bars he loved it so much, I, I figured that he went on and did 24 bars. And I'm still trying to dissect it, man, because there's so much in there. It feels like more, though. It feels like more, because there's so many words. Like, yes, sir, man, nonstop, brother, you know what I mean? And it made me feel good that somebody I look at as the best MC, in my mm -hmm. opinion, you know what I mean, um, to say that he feels the same way about me, yeah. you know what I mean? And he said that... Chris, tell Chris Calico, he's dope on there, man. You know, so I have to call Chris and guess what he said. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful wow. thing, man. So to have that kind of accolade coming from somebody we look to as the best, it was a beautiful thing. So let's go back 16 years when you guys first met. Mm -hmm. What did you think Eminem would turn into when you first met him? And what did you think Tech 9 would turn into at that point in your career? Where was your head at? Well, I knew once I heard him rap, you know what I'm saying? Um, I knew that he was going to be something special. You know what I mean? We, we both signed our deals at the same time. He signed with Interscope and Dre. I signed with Quincy Jones. You know what I'm sizzling? So I always knew that I had something special. But you know what I mean? Um, the people that I signed with, you know, didn't really know what to do with this. <laughs> You know, that's a lot to deal with, you know what I'm saying? What I wear, I'm not trying to be, you know, all flashy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is, this is how we work, you know what I'm saying? We, this is Nuthouse right here. We yeah. represent the Nuthouse in the, in, the, in the name of Brian Bezel Dennis. So it's like, they didn't know what to do with this. And at the time I had red spiked hair, they didn't know what to think, you know what I mean? So it was harder for me, but uh, he went, Pew! you know what I'm sizzling? But Tech Nine's been going, you know what I'm saying? And we're still on the incline. It's so beautiful, man. So I, I, don't, I wouldn't change anything that I did back then because I learned a lot. And when I finally got with Travis O'Gwen, man, he's just a shrewd businessman, dude. You know what I mean? It's, he, 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 he made it possible for all the technicians to have something to grasp. You know what I'm saying? Um, by putting this logo right here on everything, you know what I'm saying? It's on everything, on, on G-strings, on um, <laughs> uh, money clips, on um, koozies, you know, so just everything, man. Things that I wouldn't even think of, you know what I mean? But uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. I'm so glad that it turned out the way it turned out. But most rappers after, I mean, look at, I, I can't believe the amount of time you've been in the game, and I'm gonna talk about it a little later in the Red Pill too, but they're kind of living now off their catalog and history. Yeah. Not, your albums are getting bigger and bigger, and I'm hearing, there, some saying in the industry that when this new album, Special Effects, comes out uh, May 4th, 
it might be number one and it's gonna be your highest selling album. Yeah. Hood Go Crazy is yeah. already charting higher than yeah. Fragile did. Yeah. You're getting bigger at this stage of your career. No, I mean, this is so wild to me. I always felt like that I was being preserved for some great reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because um, it keeps getting better and better, bro. You know, I'm sizzling and I don't have to really, you know, try. It's just natural, you know what I mean? And, I mean, don't get me wrong, I try my best to do my best and I do do my best, you know? But um, it's a natural thing for me to hear a beat and just, ooh, that's how it's supposed to go, you know what I'm saying? So I dip in and dip out. Look for another chick then, they spit out. It's just meant for me to do it like that, you know what I'm saying? The beat tells me what to do and I just love that more people are starting to log on, man, because we always felt like we had something special and something that people could enjoy, you know what I mean? And uh, that the fact that the albums are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and better and the styles and everything, man, is, um, is amazing to me. You told me before your favorite people in every genre. Almost every genre. On this album. I don't have bluegrass or anything like that, but you know, um, uh, yeah, almost every genre. You know what I mean? Uh, so this might be your biggest album. This today. is to me my best work. Um, I think I hope my fans agree. You know what I mean? Um, they say angelic. I say I'm way more polished than I was in 2001. Uh, they say uh, ever ready. I think I'm, I know I'm way more polished than I was in 06. I think this is my greatest creation. Wow. And my partner Travis, being a connoisseur of music as well, I trust his opinion. He said the same thing, and he's really critical about music. You know, yeah. Sizzling. Um, You've and, got a lot of music out there to live up to. It's just yeah. like you're, you're getting better with, yeah. with time. Yeah, man, you know, and only person that I, only people I didn't really get to get that I sent out for was Jay-Z. That's because he's like, um, he wouldn't do music at this time. And you wouldn't put your music on the, the streaming services. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said, they, 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 Jay-Z said that he's given more of a percentage to the artist, so kudos to him, you know what I'm saying, if he's doing that. Yeah. Um, but, who else is on the album, though? Um, who else is on the album? Me and Hobson did Psycho Bitch 3. Um, Corey Taylor and uh, I did one called Wither. It's a uh, dream come true. I've been wanting to be um, work with Slipknot for so many years. Awesome. I just did Knot Fest with them last October 26th. It was my first metal fest. And at the end, I got everybody like this. So I was like, <laughs> wow, you know, it was perfect. Um, me and Eminem, finally, after a decade plus, you know, um, me and 2 Chains of B.O.B., of course, you know. Uh, me and Audio Push, we did one yeah. called Give It All. Um, me and T.I. and Zeus did one called On the Bible, you know what I mean? Um, who else, man? Is, is you so Wayne on there? Huh? Is Wayne on this one? Yeah, Wayne. Thank you, thank you. you, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you thank you, thank you. Now, thank your you. relationship with Wayne is kind of crazy because you, you first met him, what? It, was it in, was it in, was it in, Rikers. in prison? Rikers. I went so to you, Rikers. You went there. Huh? You were one of the few people that actually went to prison oh, yeah, and visited man. Wayne. That he would let in because there was some people he would That's not true. let in. He's like, I don't want to see those people, you know what I'm saying? And I yeah. said, I wanted to get up there and say thank you for him mentioning my name out of the blue. And the uh, OGs got together and got me up in there while I was doing press week up there in New York. And uh, I went up there and talked to him for three hours. And he said, when I get out, it's on. And we did, uh, as soon as he got out, he, me and Travis flew down to Miami and at, at Hit Factory Criteria, we did the interlude, you know what I'm yeah. sizzling? Um, I had no idea that Andre 3000 was going to be on it. He, showed it to me when he came to Kansas City. He's like, you want to hear your song? I'm like, yeah. He played it. I was like, oh. you know what I'm saying? It's a massive album, man. It's, it's a cool. massive album. And it's, I feel like that it takes, you know how, I said this before, but you know how you look at a movie, and at the end of the movie, you have all the names going up. It's just like take a, 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 a whole, a, it takes a group of people to make something beautiful, you know what I'm sizzling? And it's a group effort, you know what I mean? And that's what this is, a group effort in order to, help each other up, yeah. you know what I mean? It's crazy how far you've come in the industry from being kind of the outcast to now with, with Wayne, with Eminem now yeah. being friends with them. And yeah, because I stayed true text. to what I believe yeah. in myself and real recognize real, and you, you know what I'm saying? So to, to be able to get accolades from Eminem or Excision or Corey Taylor, the people I look up to is like, whoa, you know, I ain't even met Dr. Dre ever, not once. And, you know, it's funny, speaking of Dre, one of his artists you had first. And you oh, guys Kendrick, still yeah, 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 yeah. What'd and, you think of Kendrick's album? Uh, I think that it's totally Kendrick. I think he's been, that he's always had that jazz about him. He al he's always had that spoken word vibe about him, but he did it to the fullest on this one. It's actually, um, spoken word poem throughout the whole album and it 
tells you more as it goes on. And then it, it just blew me away when it was a Tupac interview at the end. I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? But Did you know he'd go on to be as big as he was when you, when you guys first connected? When he gave me Section 80, yeah, in Santa Cruz, California on our tour, I listened to it. I said, whoa. I gotta get you on something. I knew it. So I put him on all sixes and sevens. I love music with me and my um, yeah. relative, uh, Marcus Yates, and nobody knew who he was. He was on that album. So when the new album came out and I needed somebody to really go, I called him again and everybody mm -hmm. knew him. And it was like, bang, Kendrick, you know what I mean? So yeah, I knew, the set, just like I know about J-Rock, just like I know and knew about Schoolboy Q and Absol. I know talent, you know what I'm sizzling? So uh, yeah, I knew about Kendrick. Great. I, kn I knew he was gonna do it. I knew he was gonna do it, but to get accolades from all my peers like that, to get it from KRS-One, yeah. dude, you know what I'm saying? He went, yeah. To get it from Raekwon, you know, like yeah. what? To get it from Nas. You know, you would think that my head would be bigger than what it is right now in person, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, all those guys, even Slaughterhouse, man, yeah. just lyrically, just murderers, they look to me, Royce, the 5'9", what? Awesome. What? You now, know what I mean? Just, just um, validation all across the board on this album. Validation from all the people that do it the best, and they say that you do it the best, Tech. Isn't it ironic that you had to start your own radio station and the stuff that we did with Dash and Dash, Independent Grind? Man, that's so crazy. And then now you're getting all the other radio after yeah. you do it yourself and show that there's that That's fan crazy. Base. That's crazy, but Dash is our baby, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We can, you were there make day it one. Do, we can make it do whatever we want it to do. We don't have to get... You know, we don't have to get permission. Like, can we play this? Can we, we should play this. Because me and Chris Calico always wanted to do um, a radio station. Yeah. And, you know, maybe later on in life, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll probably still be doing shows and stuff, but we do our own radio station. And now we have so Dash, Independent Grind. It's so wonderful. Yeah, now you come from humble beginnings. Yeah. Midwest, Kansas City, Missouri. Made it from nothing. Now, top of Forbes list, all these different things. It's not all glamour and glitz that just comes along with that, though. I've heard that, you know... <laughs> Some, some stories with you and, and family and what are some of the negative sides about being this successful and what advice do you have to people that, that make it up there because it's not like you make it then life is perfect and, and you're good you face different challenges how have you been able to fight through those people wanting money people coming at you for different things it's hard to fight through it because it comes in the form of people you love money won't change you but it will change other people People will start to feel inferior around you and start getting an attitude about you and they say you're the one that's acting funny. When you're not acting funny, it's just them feeling inferior around you. What this Forbes list thing, it's a wonderful achievement. Of course. Yes, it is. But it's like inviting ants to a picnic. You know what I mean? People find that out and come at you a lot of the times negatively. People that used to be in your past, like I feel like I deserve some of that because I was with you. You know, um, death threats might come up, you know what I mean? I'm the kind of guy I wish those things would kind of be on the low low because I don't like to invite ants to a picnic. As far as the money thing, man, it's, it's positive and it's negative because we're from the hood, man. We're, we're from the ghetto, so, you know, people need help in the ghetto. You know, some family members need help. Every family member needs help. Like I say, we need each other. It's hard finding out that it's never enough. Money changes a lot of people, but what they, re what they have to realize is that a lot of people that know me know that I'm the same guy. The only thing different about me is I, I'm drug free now. What made you when, you, when you went sober, what was the turning point for you where you decided to, to give up that side of? Um, I, almost, uh, I almost died of doing 15 pills in one night, man. Ecstasy, man, you know what I'm saying? From dehydration, you know. And uh, my little one, Rainbow, man, she's 16 now, but when she was like, Two, you know, you know how you like. I don't know if you ever do this when you know you had a girl at home and you uh, sneak in the house like six o'clock in the morning to act like you were on the couch. You know what I mean? And just slip in there and act like you've been asleep right there. You know, and they're in the room and they come in there and like, when'd you get home? I've been here. You know, what do you mean? You know, sizzling. But my little girl came in and she just looked at me and I was so high and I'm like, oh, 
felt like I was about to die, man. You know what I'm saying? I looked at her eyes. I'm like, I need to be here for them. You know what I'm sizzling. Now, one last question I have for, for you kind of personally. So you've been through a lot. We kind of talked about some of the, the negative stuff, obviously the positive stuff. And I know you probably went through one of the toughest times of, of your life right now with, yes. with, with your mom passing away yeah. um, in between these cycles. Now, how do you fight through the, all these negative things and still come out stronger? I see it in your art as you're, you're talking about, you know, religion and all these, you know, things that you, you're, that you're, I'm sure, going through. Yeah. But for everybody listening out there, what advice do you as Tech 9 somebody that's been on both sides, highest the highs, I'm sure the lowest the lows, within that, how do you always maintain? This is my therapy. If you don't get it out, it will eat you alive, man. My mom passed when I was in the air on the way to do Summer Jam, June 6th. Um, in Denver, Colorado, me and Kendrick. A couple days before, you know, I talked to my brother, and he's like, man, she's on her last, you know, man, you need to get here. So I had an off day on June 7th, you know what I mean? So me, being a spiritual guy I've been raised to be, I'm like, God favors me, so I'll get to go do this show. And, you know, go kiss mom, because I talked to her some days before. And she just kept on saying over and over and over, over, liberty and justice for all. She, she was slurring, I don't want to do it because I don't want you to hear how it sounded, but she was saying liberty and justice for all, liberty and justice for all, over and over. And I said, it's, I smiled, it was the last time I talked to her. I said, I said that, is that all you want, baby? And she said, liberty and justice for all. She was on her deathbed saying liberty and justice for all. That's what she wanted, that's a tall order. Especially Liberty and justice for all. Have you seen the news lately? So that's a tall order from the angel, but that's all she wanted. So me thinking that I'm favored by God, I went and did the show. I, I went up in the air, landed. Travis called me as soon as I landed, said, um, yeah. So then I started not feeling so favored. You know, I'm like, what happened? You know, I thought I could go tomorrow, but some, even though I was hurt, she would want me to do that, man, you know what I'm saying, do that show in her name. I'm trying to actually lose my belly that I gained over the holiday now so I can get, finally get the thing that I thought of in my skull, the snake and the bat, all in my stomach and get L a J F A Lodge Fa in the middle of it. Liberty and justice for all for my mom, man. She would want me to keep pushing. And the fact that I keep pushing, it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. You know what I'm saying? And I'm never gonna let her go. She's right here, man. If you let it fester, it will eat you alive if you don't have some kind of release. Music is my release. Music is my therapy. We wear these hospital scrubs because it symbolizes people that need to be hospitalized mentally or, or institutionalized or something but we get that crazy out and get that confusion out and get that happiness out through music man she would want me to do that and you would want yourself to get it out of you whatever is having you ill or having you hurt man you have to get it out write it down i tell people write it down do, even if you're not a rapper just write it down just document it say something speak out to other people do something to get it out of you because if you don't it will kill you and what do I look like dying when my mom just passed and I can't hold that torch and say Marty Sue Khalifa every damn day. Tech Nine, let's go have one more therapy session on the stage. Yeah, Thank man. you so much for opening up and sitting Thank down you. with us. It's Thank always you. a pleasure. Ladies sure. and gentlemen, the one and only Tech Nine special effects. May 4th, we've got another performance coming up next on Speed TV.